Let's Doppler. Do you understand how to tell the direction of flow when using Doppler? Watch this tutorial to learn some easy tricks. First of all, Doppler all starts with the color map. Let's learn what all the colors on the map signify. Doppler looks at the frequency that's transmitted out into the tissue and compares it to the frequency that's transmitted back to the transducer after encountering a moving object. This shift in frequency is what gives us our Doppler information. So let's explore the color map. The first color is black. The black color on a color Doppler map is the baseline. This represents an area of zero flow where there's no Doppler shift and it separates the positive and the negative Doppler shifts. Next is flow above the baseline or flow above the black color. This represents flow towards a transducer or a positive Doppler shift. Next we have flow below the baseline. This is flow away from the transducer or a negative Doppler shift. Please note that red and blue colors on a color map can easily be inverted or switched around. So red does not always indicate a positive Doppler shift and blue does not always indicate a negative Doppler shift. Next is anagrade flow. Anagrade flow is commonly mistaken for a positive Doppler shift. However, what it really means is that flow in a vessel is moving in the expected direction for that vessel. Similarly, retrograde flow means that flow is moving in the opposite direction than expected for a vessel. And even though it's commonly mistaken as a negative Doppler shift, this is not necessarily the case. Brighter colors on the color Doppler map represent higher velocity flows. Darker colors are lower velocity flow. Mosaic colors, th these are all the mixed colors on a color Doppler map. This shows mixed velocity flow and represents aliasing due to pathology or artifact. Note that color Doppler cannot determine the exact velocity of flow, rather it's a range of velocities. And that the range of velocities is represented by the velocities listed on the top and the bottom of the color Doppler map. The next step in determining direction of flow with Doppler is the color box. The color box is a box that populates onto the screen when the color Doppler control is turned on. The color box can be unsteered, which means the ultrasound beam is directed straight down into the tissue, or it can be steered to the right or to the left, directing the ultrasound beam either right or left. To determine the location of the ultrasound beam or where the trans transducer is, because for Doppler you have to know is the flow moving away or towards the transducer, what you first need to figure out is is your color box steered? If your color box is not steered, then the arrow, or which represents the ultrasound beam and your transducer, should be drawn on the side that's the active side of the screen. Usually this is the right side of the screen, but can be determined by where your icon or active side screen indicator is located on your ultrasound screen. For a color box that's steered to the right, your transducer or your ultrasound beam, the arrow is drawn on the right side. And for your color box, that's steered to the left, the arrow is drawn on the left side. Please note that when we're talking about right and left sides of the screen, we're talking about the patient's right and left sides. On an ultrasound monitor, the patient's right side of the body is actually, if you're looking at the screen, the left-hand side of the screen, and the patient's left side of the body, as you're glancing at the ultrasound screen, is actually the right side of your body. Note that that's opposite. This confuses a lot of text in the beginning. I've labeled the patient's right and the patient's left side of the body on all the images in this presentation just to make it a little bit more straightforward. One crucial step is making sure that you match the box angle, this is the color box, to the vessel angle. So here's some examples up above. In the first example, the vessel is at an angle, but the color box is unsteered. This is incorrect when Dopplering a vessel. In the next example, which is in the middle of this image, the color box is steered in the opposite direction of the vessel lie. This is also incorrect. And lastly, in the third illustration, the color box and the vessel lie are the same. And this is what you want. You want them to match so that you can determine the true direction of flow. 
All right, let's put together the things that we've learned so far. So in this first example, the box is unsteered and the vessel is lying perpendicular to the ultrasound beam. So there's not going to be a Doppler shift. So you're going to get black color, which is the baseline on the color Doppler map. Or sometimes you'll get limited amounts of color signal. In the next example, the middle illustration, the first thing we're going to do is look at the top of our color map. The top of the color map is the red color. So in this example, red is representing a positive Doppler shift. So we're going to now look at our vessel. Our vessel is also red. So this tells us that this vessel is moving towards the transducer. And we can see that because the little black arrow underneath this vessel shows that that flow is moving towards orange arrow, which is the location of the transducer or the ultrasound beam. So this flow is a positive Doppler shift, flow towards the transducer. Another thing to check before we determine that though is to make sure that your vessel lie and your color box are at the same angle. If they're not, then that information can be inaccurate. And in this case, they are angled in the same direction. So we know that this vessel is moving towards the transducer. In the next example, uh, first thing we're gonna do is look at our color box. And on this particular color box, note that the bottom color is now red. So this tells us that red means flow that's a negative Doppler shift or flow that's moving away from the transducer in this example. Next, I'm gonna look at my color box and my vessel lie. They are angled the same direction so that I know when I'm looking at flow direction, it will be accurate. If you look at the little black arrow and also the color of my vessel, which is red, these tell me that flow is moving away from the ultrasound beam or the location of the transducer. And in this image, the location of the transducer and the ultrasound beam is that orange arrow. So in this example, this flow is moving away from the transducer and it represents a negative Doppler shift. These three illustrations all represent flow towards the transducer or the ultrasound beam. In the first box, our vessel is blue and note that my color box is following the lie of the vessel, so that's good. The top of the color bar is blue, so blue represents flow moving towards the ultrasound transducer, which is a positive Doppler shift. I double check this also because the flow is moving towards the location of the ultrasound beam, which is that yellow arrow on the screen. In the middle illustration, the top of my color bar is red, which is representing a positive Doppler shift, and my vessel color is red. My vessel box angle also matches the lie of the vessel, so I know that it will be accurate. Note that red in this example means flow is moving towards the transducer and a positive Doppler shift. And I can double check this with the arrows I drew on here for illustration purposes. My black arrow, which is my direction of flow, is moving towards the ultrasound beam or transducer, which is represented by the yellow arrow. In the last example, there's two vessels on the screen. We're gonna be looking specifically at the bottom vessel. In this illustration, the box is steered towards the right, so my arrow is on the right side of the screen. And note, this is the patient's right, not the sonographer's right. So I know that yellow area represents where my transducer or my ultrasound beam would be. The bottom vessel in this region is red. And if I look at my color map, red color is above the baseline. So red is a positive Doppler shift in this case. So I know that my flow is moving towards the ultrasound beam, not away. And I can clearly see that my vessel box steering angle matches the lie or direction of my vessel. So that's another thing to check for accuracy. And for a last step for checking, the black arrow here shows flow going towards the yellow arrow, which is the location of my transducer. Internet next example, these three illustrations represent flow moving away from the transducer or ultrasound beam. In the first image, the color Doppler box and my vessel lie match, which is step one. The vessel color is blue, so I look at my color map and note that blue in this instance is at the bottom of the baseline, which means that it is a negative Doppler shift or flow away from the transducer. And just for illustration purposes, 
purposes, you would not have this in real life. Just so you guys can see it easier, I've put arrows on the screen. So you can see that the black arrow underneath the vessel represents the direction of flow, and the yellow arrow represents the location of the ultrasound beam or the transducer. And you can see that my direction of flow, the black arrow is moving away from that yellow arrow, which is the transducer. So this represents flow away from the transducer or negative Doppler shift. In the middle illustration, my vessel is red and red in this example represents flow below the baseline. I can see that on my color map because the red color is at the bottom of the color map. I'm double checking my box. My box is steered the same angle as my vessel so that information will be accurate. And my last check, just for illustration purposes, my black arrow, which is the direction of flow, is moving away from my yellow arrow, which is the location of the ultrasound transducer. So in the middle illustration, the flow is moving away from the transducer, which is a negative Doppler shift. In the last example, there's two vessels. We're going to be focusing on the top vessel. The top vessel is a blue color, and the blue color on the color map in this image represents flow below the baseline. I can see that because blue is the bottom color on my color map. I'm gonna double check my box and my vessel, and my box and my vessel are both steered the same direction so that I know my color flow information will be accurate. And just as a last visual representation, note that these will not be present in real life imaging. The black arrow at the top of that blue vessel represents a direction of flow, and the yellow arrow represents the location of the transducer or the ultrasound beam. My black arrow in that top vessel is moving away from my yellow arrow, which is our third check, that this is flow moving away from the transducer or a negative Doppler shift. Should you steer or should you not steer the color box? This is one of the most common questions that I get asked when I'm teaching. So in this first example, always steer the color box when you're evaluating a vessel. An unsteered color box will hamper the filling of your color Doppler signal. And steering is critical for accurate flow direction and and velocity range information. And you wanna steer the box to match the vessel lie. In the next example, the middle image, you do not need to steer the color box when you're evaluating a mass. The purpose of evaluating a mass with color Doppler is to look for the presence or the absence of blood flow. Blood flow direction and velocity are not important in a mass. So the color box can remain unsteered when looking at a mass. And in the last example, when you're using power Doppler, Doppler, you sometimes want to steer the box. And we're talking about traditional power Doppler in this example. Traditional power Doppler does not give you information about direction of flow or flow velocity. Now there is newer technology that is directional power Doppler. We are not discussing that here today. So with traditional power Doppler, because it does not provide directional information, if you're just evaluating a mass or you're evaluating an organ as a whole, just to see the color flow pattern in an organ, you do not need to steer the power Doppler box. However, if you're evaluating a vessel with power Doppler, you do want to steer the box to match the lie of the vessel. And this is not because it will give you flow information or velocity information, but this is simply because if your box is steered when you're evaluating a vessel, it's gonna fill in with the signal a lot better than if your box is unsteered. Okay, three more examples of to steer or not to steer your color box. So in the first example, in these three illustrations, steer the color box to create an angle when your vessel is lying flat or perpendicular. When your vessel is completely flat or perpendicular, you're gonna get no Doppler signal or very little Doppler signal. So steer your box to try to give that vessel an angle and also heel toe your transducer. These two things will help provide an angle so that you can get better direction of flow and also velocity information. When you're evaluating the overall blood flow signal in an organ, such as the kidney, for example, there's no need to steer the color box. And this pertains to the kidney, thyroid, scrotum, several organs. Best to leave the box unsteered when you're just looking at the overall pattern of blood flow of an organ. And then we come to a curvilinear transducer. You cannot steer the color Doppler box when you're using a curvilinear transducer. And the ultrasound beam is going to be directed differently in separate regions of the color box, which will talk about in a few minutes. So what 
you need to do when you're using a curvilinear transducer is to create an angle with your transducer. And you do this by heel toeing your transducer or trying different windows to produce an angle so that you can get accurate velocity and direction of flow information. All right, let's talk about some pitfalls when you're determining flow direction. So these are things that will produce an erroneous flow direction information, meaning you'll think the flow is going the opposite direction than it truly is. So first of all, if your transducer orientation is backwards, for most types of general and vascular ultrasound, the transducer notch should face up, which is a sagittal plane, or to the patient's right side, which is the transverse plane. You wanna check for the orientation icon on the ultrasound screen. Is that orientation icon on the right side of the screen? If not, your reverse image orientation button may be pressed, which means your ultrasound screen is backwards. Next, you wanna check your transducer notch. Is your transducer flipped backwards? Either of these can cause your color Doppler flow information to be represented backwards than its true direction. One of the biggest things that can produce erroneous flow direction information is if your color Doppler invert key is pressed. There's a lot of information on the internet that describes direction of flow as remembering the acronym BART, which stands for blue away, red towards. And I think that this is really faulty way of teaching color Doppler because that is not always true. The top of your color box and the bottom of your color box can really be represented by multiple different colors and they're not always going to be the same. The color Doppler invert key flips the colors that are assigned to the positive and the negative Doppler shifts on the color map. Note that this does not change the direction of flow. It just changes the color that represents the positive and the negative Doppler shifts. A color map will always display positive Doppler shifts at the top of the color map above the baseline and negative Doppler shifts at the bottom of the color map below the baseline. So please pay attention to what color is on top and bottom. And it really could be any color, red, blue, green, pink. The color doesn't matter so much as reading the map and figuring out which color currently represents positive Doppler shifts and which color currently represents negative Doppler shifts. All right, another thing that's gonna give you erroneous flow direction information is if your color box is steered the opposite direction of how your vessel is lying. When the color Doppler box is steered the opposite direction that the vessel is angled, the flow information is going to invert. Flow that's moving towards the transducer will suddenly be represented as flow that's moving away from the transducer. The flow direction in, in the vessel hasn't changed, but the ultrasound machine shows incorrect flow direction because the ultrasound beam is directed opposite direction as the vessel angle. All right, additional things that are gonna give you erroneous flow direction information. Uh, number one is if your color box is not steered when you're evaluating a vessel, a perpendicular or flat vessel with an unsteered color box is going to produce no color Doppler shift, so no color Doppler signal. You want to steer the box, heel toe the transducer, and or change your scanning window to produce an angle so that Doppler shift information can be obtained. And a second thing that can give you erroneous flow direction information is if your area of interest lies perpendicular to the ultrasound beam. If the area of interrogation is perpendicular to the ultrasound beam, there's not going to be any color Doppler signal. And this is displayed as black in the color box because there is no Doppler shift at 90 degrees. So in this example, these are both unsteered color Doppler boxes. The vessel is perpendicular to the ultrasound beam on 90 degrees. So you're either going to get no signal, zero Doppler shift, and the vessel will be completely black, or you're going to get a very limited color Doppler signal in the box. Another thing that gives you erroneous flow direction information is if you incorrectly are determining the location of your ultrasound transducer or ultrasound beam. So to ensure that you're correctly determining the location of the transducer slash ultrasound beam, you draw two dotted lines from each corner of the Doppler box. The side of the box with the dotted line that's outside the color Doppler box is the side that the transducer or ultrasound beam is located. And this is where you can draw your imaginary arrow. So you can see that if you're using a box that's steered to the right, the position of the ultrasound beam or transducer transducer should be on the right side of that box. Note this is the patient's right side. And conversely, if you have a ultrasound box steered to the left, the location of the transducer or the ultrasound beam is on the patient's left side, the side of the ultrasound screen that represents the patient's left side. 
For a curvilinear transducer, it's really confusing at first to determine direction of flow. Note that you should have three arrows drawn, which represent the ultrasound beam location or transducer location when you're dealing with a curvilinear color box. On the right side, which represents the patient's right side of the body, and on the left side and on the middle, the arrows are all facing a different direction. So how you do this is you draw an imaginary arrow on each side of the color Doppler box parallel to the box edge, starting at the top of the box, and then draw an imaginary arrow down the center of the color box, starting at the top of the box. And you want to pay attention to the color Doppler map information. So in this diagram, the color map shows blue as representing flow away from the ultrasound beam, black as baseline, which is an area of zero Doppler shift, and red representing flow towards the ultrasound beam. The vessel is therefore traveling from right to left with flow away from the transducer on the right side of the screen, no flow information in the middle of the screen in the area perpendicular to the transducer and flow towards the transducer on the left side of the screen. Note that this is the patient's left and right side of the bodies, not the screen location when you are looking at the ultrasound screen. And last but not least, how to determine flow direction with spectral Doppler. So I want you to look at the spectral waveform. There's a velocity scale on the side of the spectral waveform and the velocity scale is going to have a plus and a minus sign. This will represent positive versus negative Doppler shifts. If the waveform is on the side of the baseline that has a plus, then the waveform represents flow towards the transducer, which is a positive Doppler shift. If the waveform is on the side of the baseline that has a negative, then the waveform represents flow away from the transducer or a negative Doppler shift. The invert key can easily flip the positive and the negative signs either above or below the baseline. Make sure that you compare your waveform direction of flow with your color Doppler map and your vessel information to make sure that everything's making sense. So a waveform that's above the baseline does not always necessarily represent flow towards the transducer, only if there's a plus sign at the top part of that velocity scale. Interested in more videos about ultrasound? Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for our next video on Wednesdays.